Hi guys, my name is Chase Davis, uh, Director of Technology at the Center for Investigative Reporting, and today I'm hoping to talk a little about data journalism, past and future, but I'm going to do it with a little bit of a twist. Almost every slide in this presentation has behind it data and data journalism techniques that are all open sourced at this site here, if you all want to check it out and look under the hood a little bit. Um, and so that's a great way to sort of figure out sort of the nuts and bolts of the way that some of this stuff goes and a good way to introduce yourself to the subject. But for the purposes of conversation, one important question to start things off, what exactly is data journalism? It's not a very trivial question because it's been called about a thousand things over the years. Uh, but I tend to look at it as the application of uh, computer analysis techniques, computer programming, etc., to find, reveal, and tell stories that would be impossible to tell otherwise. Now, this is not a novel thing. It's been around since the 60s. This guy, Philip Meyer here, uh, sort of the spiritual founder of our craft, wrote a book uh, in the early 70s called Precision Journalism, which is sort of the early manifesto of the type of work that we do. And if you look at the themes in that book, what's interesting about it is that they really railed against the prevailing orthodoxy of the time and, and uh, sort of challenged the idea that we should be coming up with our stories based on uh, gut instinct and instead suggest that we should be basing them on data for a slightly more robust way of looking at things. Now this caught on as journalism professionalized in the late 80s. The uh, Atlanta Journal-Constitution won a Pulitzer for showing the disparities in home lending uh, acceptance rates between blacks who were qualified and whites who weren't. And uh, this really ended up touching off something in the data journalism world. Now after this, you see, this is a demonstration of investigative Pulitzer Prizes that have been won ever since 85 when it was introduced. Red blocks mean data was used, and you can see that that's something that's been happening more often in recent years. In fact, almost all the time in recent years, uh, as data has been applied to the course of investigative reporting, largely because of an organization called NICAR, who has done a lot of training in this area. Now, this is a demonstration of the way that they have, uh, some of the classes they did in 1998, a lot of databases, a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of stuff that really isn't very high-level tools, but managed to enable a lot of very high-level work. Fast forward to 2012, and you see a much broader variety of stuff that they're training in, natural language processing, machine learning, statistics, all these kinds of things. And it really sort of heralds this idea that data journalism is entering this golden age, this age that is instead of one of scarcity, one of abundance, and enabled in large part by open source tools, more sophisticated analysis techniques that are becoming more popular, that are truly enabling people to do some absolutely fantastic work. And so again, moving from this age of sort of scarcity to this age of abundance, what you're starting to see is data journalism applied everywhere covering government stuff, justice, First Amendment rights, all the way down to social issues, politics. This stuff is being applied as a regular aspect of journalists' lives these days, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know. But another very fascinating aspect of it is that rather than just having a few people practicing, there are practicing data journalists everywhere. You only have to go for a day's drive in the United States to find a practicing data journalist someplace. I checked. <laughs> the... Um, one cardinal rule of data journalism, by the way, this is a slight aside, do not overwhelm your audience with data. This is our puppy, Kirby. He's four months old in this picture. He's the cutest dog on the face of the earth, and he's your brief period of respite from the data. But now we resume. Looking at the future of data journalism, what you're seeing is a parallel, at least in my mind, between data journalism and data science, which is what makes things like this conference so great because people from both sides are in the same room. And if you look at some of the canonical texts that describe what both of these things are, you see these narratives that are very similar. You see this urgency on both sides to tell truth and reveal truth using data in very unconventional ways, and you see this, this focus on both sides on storytelling, which is absolutely fascinating to me. It may be that data journalists tend to focus a little bit more on the public policy aspects, the investigative aspects. Data science folks tend to focus a little more on the business and things. They may have a slightly more sophisticated understanding of techniques, but generally we're all kind of in the same place here, which I think is absolutely great. Now, there, one of the great things about NewsFu, again, people from both sides are in the room. This is actually a, a graph of folks uh, in the data journalism community that have been invited to NewsFu over the years, and their professional and personal connections. We are a very incestuous group, and so if you find one of us, even one of us, talk to us, we will happily invite you into the tribe, and you too can be part of this. Now, this brings us back to the Phil Meyer picture. Um, this picture was generated using a technique called principal component analysis, which tends to be something that comes more out of the data scientist toolbox than data journalist. I love it because it represents both the past and the future of where I think data journalism is headed. Again, none of you have your computers out, so this might be lost on you, or at least very few of you. Go to the site if you want to get a little bit more information. Another interesting little uh, number two rule of data journalism, always reveal your sources. My sources are going to be right here in a second. Thanks to them, thanks to you, and enjoy the rest of the talks.